Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shivangi Mishra. Here the top stories we are tracking for you. Winter session of Indian Parliament begins. PM Modi urges leaders to make it productive. Olympics Committee warns Afghanistan over women's access to sport. And Nepal allows import of luxury items after nearly eight months. And now for all the details. The winter session of the Indian Parliament began on Wednesday with Prime Minister Narendra Modi urging members to conduct a productive session without disruptions. He also pointed out at the occasion of India assuming G20 presidency and added India will determine the direction of world in coming days. In the two-week-long session, government is set to introduce 16 bills while opposition is likely to corner it on inflation and border issues. As the winter session of the Indian Parliament began on Wednesday, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi appealed for a productive session, urging senior leaders to support the government by not disrupting the proceedings. Addressing the upper house Rajya Sabha, PM Modi remarked, that the responsibility enshrined upon the shoulders of the parliament is associated with the concerns of the common man. Pointing out at occasion of India assuming G20 presidency, the PM said India will play a key role in determining the direction of the world in the days to come to achieve sustainable development goals, other than marking a new era of development for new India. ये अमृतकाल एक नए विकसित भारत के निर्माण का कालखंड तो होगा ही साथ ही भारत इस दौरान विश्व के भविष्य की दिशा तय करने में भी बहुत अहम भूमिका निभाएगा Meanwhile India's foreign minister Dr S J Shankar apprised the parliament about key foreign policy challenges and initiatives and said these activities reflected India's growing interest, expanding footprint and more intensive partnership. He also recalled PM Modi's remarks at SCO summit in Samarkand and said, the PM voiced global sentiments when he declared this was not an era of war in context to the Russia-Ukraine war. The winter session will continue till 29th of December with 17 sittings spread over 23 days. The government plans to introduce 16 bills in the session. Opposition is likely to corner the government over inflation and the India-China border situation. The Aam Aadmi Party won the elections of the Municipal Corporation of Delhi on Wednesday, sweeping aside the BJP's 15-year rule in the civic body. Aap convener and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Chival said his party will aim to make Delhi clean, beautiful and corruption-free. The Aam Aadmi Party, AAP, won the elections to the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, dislodging the Bharti Janata Party, BJP, from power in the civic body after 15 years. Celebrations by AAP workers broke out in New Delhi and across the country after the major win in the elections held on December 4. The party led by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal won 134 seats, well past the halfway mark the 250 member civic body as against the BJP's 104. The Congress backed nine, while three seats were won by independent candidates. Kejriwal, in an address, congratulated and thanked people of Delhi for bringing change. He said his party will aim to clean Delhi, beautify parks and make the civic body corruption free. <laughs> बीजेपी का भी सहयोग चाहता हूं इसमें मैं कांग्रेस का भी सहयोग चाहता हूं मैं सबका सहयोग चाहता हूं सबके सहयोग से हम दिल्ली को ठीक करेंगे सब मिलके दिल्ली को ठीक करेंगे 250 के 250 पार्षद जो चुन के आए हैं मैं अब उनसे निवेदन करता हूं कि आप किसी पार्टी के पार्षद नहीं अब आप दिल्ली के पार्षद हैं मिलके दिल्ली को ठीक करें 
A total of 1,349 candidates contested the elections, the first since three civic bodies were unified earlier this year. In 2017, BJP had won 181 of then 270 municipal wards, while AAP could secure only 48. And Congress finished third with 30 seats. In news from Pakistan, amid allegations of running away from polls, PM Shehbaz Sharif-led PMLN has decided to start its preparation for elections in Punjab, with possibility of PTI party dissolving the assembly. The move has also received a go-ahead from PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif. In an effort to dismiss the allegations of running away from election and failing to save the dissolution of Punjab assembly by former Premier Imran Khan's opposition PTI, Ruling PMLN party Supremo Nawaz Sharif has given a go-ahead for poll preparation, reports suggest. Local media quoted PMLN leader Azma Bukhari saying that Joana Sana Ullah, PMLN Punjab president, will proceed over the party's provincial chapter meeting on Friday regarding preparation for elections. She further said the meeting has been called on directions of Nawaz Sharif. Bukhari said PDI chief Imran Khan will not dissolve the assembly, but if the eventuality arises, PMLN wants to be fully prepared. Reports suggest party leaders have accepted that they may be unable to stop the dissolution. Meanwhile, PMLN leader and Minister for Economic Affairs, Sardar Ayaz Sadiq, has claimed Party Supremo will be returning to Pakistan in January 2023. Talking with a local media channel, Sadiq said Nawaz will allocate tickets to candidates for the next general election, adding the country will go to polls in 2023. The former Premier Nawaz Sharif has been living in a self-exile in London since 2019. He is the longest-serving Prime Minister but has never completed a full tenure. In 2017, Sharif was removed as Prime Minister by Supreme Court, which further disqualified him as party president in 2018. Moving on, residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir have said they are fed up with frequent price hikes of basic necessities, especially after the recent floods. Locals say the illegally occupied region, which is already marginalized, has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes, while they see no policies for their welfare. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised their concern over skyrocketing prices of all essentials, including fruits and vegetables, while the government has failed to control inflation that has soared to nearly 28%. Locals in the illegally occupied region said that due to recent floods in Pakistan, a lot of crops were destroyed, following which the authorities are compelled to import food items. But the situation has particularly hit the poor. A trader said transportation costs have also risen as he accused the Pakistani government's inefficient policies for their plight. Locals say Pakistan administered Kashmir, which is already marginalized, has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes while there is no development in sight for the past many years. Instead of any relief, Islamabad has only exploited them through economic depredations. The International Olympic Committee, IOC, warned Afghanistan's Taliban rulers on Tuesday that allowing women and young girls safe access to sport was a condition for the country's representation at the 2024 Paris Games. Female sport in Afghanistan has been crushed since the Taliban took over from a Western-backed government in August 2021. Teams representing Afghanistan must include female athletes living in Afghanistan as well as abroad and women should be represented in governing bodies and administration, the board said. This comes after Human Rights Watch official Minky Warden called on Monday for the IOC to suspend Afghanistan until women and girls could again play sport in the country. The IOC said direct support will continue to be provided to Afghan athletes where possible to help them prepare for the Olympics. 
A meeting of the Nepal Council of Ministers on Tuesday decided to remove nearly eight months long restrictions on the imports of luxurious items including cars, mobile phones, alcohol and tobacco. The ban was imposed to conserve its dwindling supply of foreign exchange. Minister of Industry, Commerce and Supplies Dilendra Badu said the decision will come into effect from December 16. Reports suggest the move comes after the IMF delayed the second installment of a $400 million loan to Nepal till February 2023, raising concerns about the import restriction policy. Surging global energy and food prices have hurt the import-dependent economy of Nepal, sandwiched between India and China, as it struggles to recover from the COVID-19 blow to key tourism industry. Its gross foreign exchange reserves had fallen to $9.7 billion as of mid-February, down 17% from mid-July last year when its financial year started. The Sri Lankan government has said the global lenders like World Bank, the Asian Development Bank and the IMF are planning coordinated assistance to help the island nation recover from its economic crisis. The statement comes after President Ranil Vikramasinghe presented the country's economic recovery plan to representatives of the multilateral financial institutions in Colombo. The Sri Lankan government on Tuesday said that global lenders including the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank and the International Monetary Fund IMF are planning coordinated assistance to help the island nation recover from its economic crisis. In a statement released by the Office of the President, it was said that President Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is also the Finance Minister, presented the country's economic recovery plan to representatives of the multilateral financial institution in Colombo. The statement added that a coordinated assistance program supported by these institutions is vital for Sri Lanka to recover from the present economic difficulties. The World Bank said earlier in the day that it had approved Sri Lanka's request to access concessional financing which would also alleviate the country's pressure on servicing debt. Sri Lanka reached a preliminary agreement with the IMF for a $2.9 billion bailout in September, but has to put its debt on a sustainable path before the funds can be dispersed. The island nation of 22 million people is in the midst of its worst financial crisis in more than seven decades, caused by an acute dollar shortage that has left it struggling to pay for its imports of food, fuel and medicine. Three leopard cubs were rescued and reunited with their mother in India's western Nasik district earlier this week. The forest officials reached the spot, examined their health and kept them restricted to the area to help their mother come back to take them away. Three leopard cubs were rescued and united with their mother in India's western Nasik city by forest officials earlier this week. The cubs, which were separated from their mother, were found by labourers in a sugarcane field near Pathadi village. The forest officials reached the spot, examined their health and kept them restricted to the area to help their mother come back to take them away, a senior official said. Our rescue team immediately went to the area and cut off the area. After cutting off the area, we placed them in a place of the cubs in one place and we kept them देख के रखा कि वो बीमार तो नहीं है और उसके बाद जो रखा गया तो रात को 9 बजे हमको रिपोर्ट आई इवन वीडियो शूटिंग भी की गई उस एरिया की कि मदर ने उस कब कब को ले जा चुकी है इंडिया बिग कैट्स आर अंडर थ्रेट विद एन इंक्रीजिंग नंबर ऑफ स्पॉटेड फेलाइन ब्यूटीज बीइंग पोस्ट फॉर देयर हाइड एंड अदर बॉडी पार्ट्स ऑन दी अदर हैंड द डिप्लीशन ऑफ देयर हैबिटेट हैज थ्रेटन दी लेपर्ड्स forcing them to stray into human settlements and often get killed in return. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.